So Microsoft use Yeoman to generate templates for running Service Fabric services on Linux. So we want to install this by typing npm install, and we should probably sudo npm install. We'll install it globally, yo. So enter that to install Yeoman. So now that Yeoman has been installed, we can run npm sudo npm install g. So we want to generate a template for a Service Fabric C Sharp service because we've already downloaded this .NET Core SDK 3.1. So we type generator dash Azure SF C Sharp and press enter to download that template. I think we spelled generator wrong there. G -E -N -E -O -R -A -T -O -R. So once that's done, we can make a new directory to host our C Sharp Service Fabric application running on Linux. So just type mkdir, let's call it new application. We'll navigate to that using cd new application. So now we're in that folder and we can simply type yo and azure sf c sharp and this should start yo man and walk us through some steps to template our first service fabric service running on linux so we don't want to do this statistics for now but you can decide yourself and we want to give our application a name so we'll just call it first application and we'll make it a reliable stateless service the name of the service will be called first stateless service and that should create the service for us here so we can see it's created several files including some scripts to install upgrade and build our application so the first thing we want to do is we want to build the application so we want to navigate into our first application and list out the files and we want to run the build script. So build.sh and that should build our service fabric service for us. Okay, so once that's done, we want to use a tool called SFCTL. And this is a tool we could use to perform various actions on our cluster, such as deploying applications, setting what the cluster we want to default connect to, and different things like that. So we want to say SFCTL cluster select, and then we want to give it the endpoint of our cluster. In this case, it's localhost 19080. If we were running our cluster somewhere else, we would obviously give it a different endpoint. So we just press enter on that. And we probably need to run that with sudo because we got permission denied. And that seems to have worked this time. And then we want to just basically install our application on our local cluster. And this will copy the application package to the cluster's image store, register the application type and create an instance of the application. So we can do dot slash install dot sh. And we need to run that with sudo, sorry. So if we run it with sudo, we should see it go through the process of deploying our C Sharp template application to our cluster. And now that said that this is complete. So if we go to our Service Fabric Explorer, we should see our new application appear very shortly. So we go to applications and we can see here the first application type is already there and the service should appear very shortly. And here it is. Here's our first stateless service. So another thing we can do when running Service Fabric on Linux is host containers inside our Service Fabric cluster. We can also do this on Windows, but this tutorial will cover how to do it on Linux. So we're on Docker Hub here, and we're just going to download a very simple Docker image for a Flask app, so using Python. So we'll copy this Docker pull, and we'll open a new terminal window, and we'll type sudo and copy in the command. So docker pull and then the name of the image, give it the password, and this should pull the docker image for us. So then again, we want to use yeoman to create the container for us. So to do this, we type sudo npm install g generator 
dash Azure SF container. And this will give us the Yeoman template for creating service fabric containers. You press enter and this should install. So once that's finished, we can run sudo yo and Azure SF container. And it should bring us through the templating process for a service fabric container application. And we want to first give it a name. So we'll call it container application and the name of the application service. So we'll just call it container service. And the input the image name. So this will be very similar to what we downloaded it. So we'll just be this bit here, JC demo slash flask app. And we don't want to give it any commands and we only want to generate one instance of the guest container. And I think this Docker application exposes port 5000. So we'll also map port 5000 to port 5000 on our computer. And that should then create the container application for us. So if we go LS, we can see we have our container application here. And if we navigate into that and list out, we can see we have a install.sh script, which we can run to install the container to our local service fabric cluster. So we just want to run that. And we want to run it with sudo again, apologies. And that should deploy the container to our service fabric cluster. So we can see there it went through a couple of different steps and the container should be deployed to our service fabric cluster. And we can check that in the service fabric explorer. We can see here now we have two applications. We have the container application type and our first application type. So this is the C sharp service and application that we deployed. And this is the containerized application, which is basically a flask API. So we can actually go to localhost 5000, which is the port we exposed and the port that this Flask application is served on. And we can actually see that the Flask application is running inside our service fabric cluster. So we go localhost 5000, press enter. And this is the output of what we see. So this is just our sample Flask application. So thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you learned the basics of running Service Fabric on Linux. There's many other things that we can do, such as running guest services and actor services. And there's many different Yeoman templates that we can use to achieve this. So if you're interested in finding out more, I definitely encourage you to check out the documentation.